had attorneys and bankers, and we had a meeting. I was a, one of the executors to the estate. And um, one of the attorneys said, after the few of these meetings, said, well, you know, we're going to have to sell Graceland. And I looked at him, and I never felt so, uh, how can I say, strong on my conviction is that that will never happen. I looked at him straight in the eye, never happen. So he goes, we're running out of money. And I said, we're not selling Graceland. So that's when I went out to start searching for someone to help me, um, guide me, assist me, partner with me, <laughs> anything to, to, um, to help. I said, Jack, what if you help me? What if you partner with me on opening Graceland? And Jack just, you know, looked at me. He goes, well, sure. I mean, absolutely. And agreed to get started, rolled the sleeves up, and had many, many meetings. And um, here we are today. And he's still here with us today. And he was the right person. So I, I feel blessed in that. I remember being, might have been one of the very first, but in a meeting in the, in the big conference room at the Glankler firm. Glankler firm. And everybody was there. Yeah, I think you were there, Joe was there, Jim from the bank. Those and are then the other two executives. The other two executors. The, but, but Frank Glankler, that was such a character, and Mac Webner, remember he was a rights lawyer. <laughs> In other words, there were like a room full of like 20 lawyers and accountants and everything else with the clock burning. And, and basically, Priscilla was just, you were just like, just this single voice going, no. They were all, their, their aggregate opinion was the, the smart fiduciary thing to do is sell everything, invest the money and et cetera. And, and Priscilla was just going, no, we're not doing that. And we're and not it, selling Graceland. Yeah, and, and it was, and it and it, it it laid the groundwork. Frankly, think what a disaster in retrospect. In in retrospect, oh, yeah. it would have been so yeah. sad. Yeah, it would never meant to be. And I kept thinking in myself, my God, what would Atlas do if he knew that Graceland was going to be sold, or you know, it wouldn't be passed on to his daughter? I, it was like all that was going in my mind, and I, you know, and I and I think I that was when I really looked at them as lawyers and accountants and thinking they're thinking money of course and I understand that but I'm thinking entirely different you know this was a home a beautiful home and it was never going to happen it was never going to be sold ever ever I can remember a consultant from Washington or something a museum consultant that came in and was looking around and going, oh yeah, they're going to peel wallpaper off and they're going to yeah. take this, they're going to take this and, and you're, you're going to have to put up plexiglass here and plexiglass there. And I remember by the time he was done, I thought, this thing's going to have the warmth of a hospital. Yeah. And, and it was, and we ultimately, we talked about it a lot and, and you, you decided to bank on the, on the reverence. Yeah. And it was, and it, what a winning mm -hmm. bet, 22 million visitors later and that thing is still so, they've, They've just treated it with reverence. Yeah, they did. They have, and still do. And and I think, uh, you know, they like we said, they feel it too. But I could not see the plexiglass. I could not see anything changed. Then it wouldn't be his home. It would be. It would just be like a whether it be a museum or somebody else's house. It could never be. I think the spirit of Elvis is there. I think people feel that spirit, and and that's why they respect it. I can remember we decided to go really fast because the, it was the last of what they used to call World's Fairs in Knoxville. And we thought, all right, there are people going to be coming to Tennessee. Let's try to get Graceland open. And, and of course, we, 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 were, we were on a shoestring anyway. There yeah. was a limited... We were running out of money. <laughs> yeah. No, there, there was an article. Judge Evans, the probate judge, even did an interview and expressed his concern back to that huge conference room filled with attorneys and, and accountants and everything else, 
that they were just going to burn up what, what liquid assets there were. So it, it wasn't a total shoestring catch, but basically opening Graceland, um, and it was, well, Angie and I were talking about this earlier, it was so profitable right from the beginning because the overhead couldn't really catch up with the revenue. You know, the, the, when we opened, the ticket was $5. <laughs> wow. The tour, tour Graceland was $5. Wow. My gosh. Jeez. And uh, and we, yeah, we've still got the original flyer with the, with adults five dollars, children three dollars, and and we didn't know at all, you know, if we would even have any guests. We we had no idea. We we were really concerned about if anyone would show up, and boy, to our surprise. Yeah, remember we used to say it was like sending an invitation to the world with no RSVP. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was um, it was nerve wracking and a bit frightening, and um, but I, I have to say, people were coming in the droves and um, loved it, and here we are today. You know, it was hard for me. It was really hard for me too to open those doors, and hard for people. You know, thinking that people were going to come through it was so private for so long, and now. People were going to be coming in and looking at our life, the way we lived. Everything was still perfect, perfect the way Elvis left it. And it was, um, in, it was hard. It was hard to actually have to come to terms, although I knew we had to do it and I had to give that up and I had to look at the good of it, <clears throat> the fact that we've saved Graceland, we have tourists coming in, we have people coming in and it's for a good cause. And, um, and it was all about saving Graceland and, and keeping it home, keeping it uh, with Elvis and the family. And um, that was hard. That was, um, I was telling that to some of the founders today that, because they had asked me the same question. I said, you know, it's still when I go in that house today, it's home. It's just the feeling, just the atmosphere, just the tone of it. It's, it's like sacred. It's just so beautiful, but it's it's like I can see Elvis at the, the dining room table and the guys. I can see over to the right when I walk in the piano and him sitting there playing the piano and I'm sitting on the couch across from the, the piano, you know, listening to him sing gospel. And um, I can visualize everything as if I was happening right then every time I go in. I can see him coming down the stairs I can see him looking to see who's down the stairs or listening, mm -hmm. uh, who's in the kitchen before he came down the stairs. Every visual I see when I walk in that door. Well, and it's it, it Graceland is, has maintained some of it for everyone. It, people all every day comment about how how they feel like Elvis is just away and can come back any time, mm -hmm. and yeah. it, it's just this authenticity that that house has that yes. it, that you that you and. Angie and uh, all the people involved in maintaining it, but there's there's something that's still just so authentic about Graceland. It is, it is authentic, and people who come in feel that there's a reverency that people have. You know, when they come in, they they automatically <coughs> know, you know, that it's a home in his home. And I, I, that was one fear. I thought, oh no, the carpets are going to be all dirty if they're because they're white, or, or someone's going to take something, or, you know, there were all of these thoughts in my mind of, you know, will it ever be the same or feel the same? And I think the guests that come into that house, the friends that are there, and and the tourists that come in, there's a reverence. Hello everyone, this is Priscilla Presley and I want to thank you fans very much for your love and dedication for Elvis Presley and for Graceland. I enjoy very much meeting you and talking to you and hearing about your stories about your love of Elvis. So keep coming, keep visiting, and we're here waiting. Bye bye. <laughs>